And this is from Outkick, the brothers at Outkick. In this case, it's Assista at Outkick, S-I-S-T-A-H, so you know I'm not being a bigot myself. Uh, Amber Harding. Shane Gills to host Saturday Night Live provoking woke, proving woke comedy doesn't work. I mean, I'm not sure if that's what that proves. With Shane Gillis? That's their podcast there. He partnered with Shane Gillis last week. <laughs> Bud Light did. And this is all part of, you know, Bud Light's desperate attempt to come back into the fray. They're going to have a big Super Bowl commercial. I've heard through the grapevine that is the people I live with <laughs> that they're going to include the Clydesdale horses, which everybody loves. Even if you've eaten horse meat, you probably love the Clydesdales. But last week, Shane Gillis was tasked with saving Bud Light, she says. Next, he'll attempt to save SNL. The once-canceled comedian will host SNL on February 24th, four and a half years after they fired him. Um, Landed his dream job in September 2019. However, the show let him go just five days later because of an organized smear campaign over old clips in which Gillis mocked Asian accents and a lazy gaze. We'll get to that clip in a moment. We want SNL to have a variety of voices and viewpoints within the show. A spokesperson for Lauren Michaels said, The language he used is offensive, hurtful, and unacceptable. We are sorry. We're sorry, eh? We're sorry that we did not see these clips earlier and that our vetting process was not up to standard. And um, as you can see here, February 24th, Shane Gill- Gillis and 21 Savage for whatever reason. Um, at the time, Gillis shrugged off the firing, saying, I'm a comedian who is funny enough to get on SNL that can't be taken away. 36-year-old also released a statement explaining that he pushes boundaries and blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, the funny thing here is how desperate Bud Light is, right? They, they're they going after the offensive comedian. He's, he's always drinking Bud Light. There's two guys that are pretty much always drinking Bud Light, and that's Post Malone and Shane Gillis. Um... You know, Shane Gillis, when he goes on Joe Rogan, they make fun of him for this now, but not really. So Shane Gillis never stopped, and maybe this is what he was working towards. Maybe he was thinking smartly through all the the rage against the machine. I couldn't help but say that against Bud Light, against Budweiser, against Anheuser Busch, very American names. Amidst all of that, he's going to say, "I'm going to keep drinking it," and maybe. They'll reach out to me afterwards, and they have. Now, of course, it all comes from Dylan Mulvaney, um, a guy who really believes that he's a girl, but he's really just acting like one. He was in Book of Mormon. He was a, a terrible Broadway actor afterwards. You know, it wasn't working out for him. He says, hey, you know what? I'll be a girl. It got me to the White House. So Bud Light is now going after Shane Gillis. They're going for Super Bowl commercials. I saw a commercial yesterday where they're using notorious B.I.G. music, uh, hypnotized, not inexpensive music to use. So they're really throwing, what are you, throwing everything at the wall? Is that the phrase? Throwing throwing every type of cheese at the wall, hoping that the marble sticks is what we're going to go with. And, you know, I don't know if that puts his foot in the door and because Bud Light made the first move as a big corporate giant to get Shane Gillis back into the fray, even though he clearly doesn't need them at this point. Did that open the door for SNL to say, okay, I guess he's okay for us to bring on now, or was it already in the works before that? I don't know. We're probably not going to know that, but it's funny that Shane said, if he ever returns to SNL, he's going to (laughs) get medical assistance and dying on air. Live from my thought, we were playing it for a second there. Thought we were playing it, we weren't playing it. Uh, Bud Dwyer on stage. I should Bud Dwyer, I, <laughs> dude. If I ever get on SNL, I will Bud Dwyer. I'll be like, <laughs> live from my mouth, this fucking gun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, already I'm like, Jesus Christ, how many? <laughs> All right, well, I guess we're not avoiding the ultra demonetization. Hispanic Sean King is the guy who posted that, and I think that's Casey Affleck. Is his. It's somebody's picture, but shout out to that guy. Let's, um, as we mentioned, Shane Gillis was fired. How many years ago was it? Let's take our time. Let's really take our time when we look. 2019, September. Five years ago, less than five years ago, five years ago, minus how many months? 
September is the 10th month, or is that October? September is the 9th month, August, February's the second month, uh, two years, five months, let's go with. We're going with that. Two years and five months ago, Shane Gillis was fired from SNL, brought on Joe Rogan, uh, things exploded for him. He's now one of the staples in the comedy scene, along with Mark Norman and Ari Shafir and on all these guys, Theo Vaughn, all these super popular comedians that you sort of look forward to whenever they appear on another show. But Shane Gillis was fired for having his podcast, not for having it, but for something he said on his podcast with, um, what's his name? I don't remember the other comedian he does it with. This is a stolen video, obviously. So here's Shane Gillis on his podcast. Um, I'm not sure what year this actually came from, but this was posted back in September, 2019. And here is what got him fired um, hopefully it's not taken we're not taken down for this but he basically is joking with his co-host about why Chinese food sucks one of them says and why it's simultaneously good I hate China I hate the food at Chinatown sucks I like Chinese it. foods are very dishonest cuisine I don't even want to think about it they invented a fucking chemical to put in their food to make it delicious dude it, it is. they made as MSG good for them it's a dishonest food dude there's nothing. It's there's nothing to it. It's, it's shitty meat. Honorable. Shitty meat. A chemical they made up to fuck your body up, and noodles, neuters. The noodles. <laughs> Cheapest right. thing in the world. We got it. Chemical. <laughs> Sick. Worst meat you can find. We got in there and we sat down, and baby girl was like, "I'm so excited for neuters," and I was like, "Yo, chill, chill, chill." She was like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." She said neuters. Yeah. And there's a fucking yeah, and it's. It's full fucking Chinese in there. <laughs> well, isn't, it, isn't that kind of like nice though? Isn't that being like when people go into like a Mexican restaurant like I'll have two tacos? Like uh, I'll have a bowl of spicy neuters. <laughs> <laughs> but we had in, in the translation between you and the waiter. Yeah. It's just such a fucking hassle. It's like can you I'm pointing at it. <laughs> like this is the fucking yeah. neuter. Well that's why I put number for like 57. Yeah this one even with the fucking shit. I was yeah. pointing I was like that sauce. <laughs> that. Like, yes. <laughs> like, yeah. So that's basically it. Now he does say the word that rhymes with kink to describe derogatorily Chinese people. So he does say that in there. I don't want to act like he didn't, but basically the pronunciation of noodles as neuters or whatever. Um, I would have a better fake Chinese accent than that personally, but that is it. Um, and I think this is indicative of the fact that we have come so far almost swallowed the microphone there indicative of the fact that we have come so far in what is deemed as offensive because i think given what we've gone through in five years or four years and seven or five months what we've talked about before this the math escapes me now is that you could he or somebody in his position probably in most mainstream comedic senses could get by if they said the exact same thing. Now, all it would take is for, you know, Bobby Lee to come out and talk about it or, um, you know, Ken Jong to say something that's, uh, yeah, he's a funny guy. doesn't mean anything by it. And I think we've actually come leaps and bounds since even when we were in the Trump administration that you can pretty much say almost anything. You can't go full Kanye. That's about, where we're at right now you can't go full kanye but because of palestinian protesters you can get pretty close now they're just fighting for freedom but we're getting pretty close to being able to say whatever we want palestinian protesters say a lot of things if you ever watch any of the protest videos i wager it to be you know like 15 percent people who are actually give a hoot about palestine 85 percent you know, they were at the George Floyd rallies. They were at the um, anti-Trump rallies, anti-gun rallies, my body, my choice, pussy hat rallies. They were at all those. But the 15% of them that are saying things that they're not afraid to say, they're really pushing the envelope towards the full Kanye. Not saying that's good. Not saying you should go on unauthorized opinions and say that. I'm just saying we've come leaps and bounds from where we were in 2019 to be able to say things. I know people who were fired from places for saying things. I know p people who were fired from places for doing things. I know people who left organizations because of other people doing things. 
And if they were to come out, you know, the people who fired them or the people who accused them of something, if they were to come out and say or do these things now, the support would be much, much greater. If it was a person who said, hey, this guy was sexist to me, most of the internet would be like, explain it tell us more <laughs> did you deserve it like not that any not that the person deserves it i'm just saying this is what the internet would go to nobody trusts the interpretation that they hear first anymore and that's a good thing and they shouldn't people should do that more people should be more distrustful of their source because in many cases the source is the view and what are the sources of the view they are crows um, ravens, seagulls, any type of bird that you don't necessarily want to be near. That's what the source at the view is like. A little blue jay comes up to you or a nice red cardinal. And you're like, Mr. Birdie or Mrs. Birdie, please tell me what you got to say. Chirp, 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 chirp. A big ass raven or crow. If you got Sonny Hostin or what's her face? Joy Behar coming up, and they're flapping their old lady wings at you. <laughs> You're not going to trust what they're saying as much as you would the nice Blue Jay over at, I don't know, maybe even maybe even the Washington Post at this point, or maybe even at Forbes or something. I'm trying to think of a left-wing outlet that's got a better standing uh, than CNN or MSNBC. But when you're when Sonny Hostin's flapping her wings at you and Whoopi Goldberg's, um, you know, throwing tomatoes at you, I don't know what she would do. And they're accusing somebody of having a fake name and their names are Whoopi Goldberg and Sonny Hostin. And these aren't their fake names. You're you're questioning their source. You see what I'm saying? You're questioning their validity on the statement. So now when somebody says you won't believe this offensive thing that Shane Gillis said on his podcast or you won't believe that Andrew says went to a women's conference and called people fat youtube.com slash Andrew does for that one. Did it happen? Didn't it happen? I don't know. Should you believe this is a source? People are going to start questioning it much, much more. And that's a good thing. So that's what I'm saying is Shane Gillis um, and anybody of the ilk, Tony Hinchcliffe, they got canceled for being racist. But what's the context? Were they joking? Um, is it inherently just because it's mean? Do people of that culture find it offensive? Would they find it offensive if they knew the context? And people have proven things like this. Will Witt, for example, shout out OG Will Witt, OG Streeters, OG Andrew Says Guest. He has gone to Hispanic areas dressed as a Mexican caricature, poncho, mustache, uh, Mar maracas, chimichangas. And asked them if they hate his outfit. They say no, they loved it. He is dressed in a comical Asian outfit, kimono, rice field hat. Um, don't know whether or not he was waving communist communist flag. They liked his traditional stuff. Went on a com college campus. They thought he said he was racist. Okay, so that's what I'm saying is people are getting wise to it. And I kind of wish people on the right wing were more like this now because everybody else is, you know, a lot of people don't trust what's happening, but a lot of people on the right wing will see some, some uh, news headline and be like, this person's on our side now or... Uh, the space lasers really, really got to them there. They shot everything that was labeled blue. I wish some that would happen more often. Turn it up, Jordan.